بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد Naturally every person would want the best for himself for his family and generally in humanity Besides humanity one will want goodness for even the animal kingdom all other species on earth Now to achieve this goodness this greatness this perfection, the system which ensures preservation, we need an advisor and this preservation will be with regards to dunya or akhirah. With regards to dunya, there be many, possibly many people to advise but with regards to akhirah, there are not many. So if a person has to get it right, one is dunya and one is akhirah. He has to find the best advisors. And if we see the difference, dunya is speculative, whereas akhirah is definite. So dunya we're not sure, it's always trial and error, it's always events which are unclear, situations which are unclear, results which are unclear, so always speculation. But it's akhirah is definite, there is qabr, there are angels in the qabr, there is hisab kitab. Every stage of the Akhirah is definite. Dunya is temporary. Our period is for a limited time. Year after is permanent. Dunya is a preparatory ground, whereas Akhirah is the final destination, the final frontier. Dunya has limitations, very restricted. Akhirah no limitations. Dunya you can eat so much, sleep so much, drink so much. Everything with Dunya is limited. Man cannot do certain things. Why? Because it's restricted. You cannot go underwater unless you have oxygen. You cannot do a float in the air. So there's restrictions. In Akhirah there is no restrictions. Dunya is based on the apparent systems and outward systems, but Akhirah is based on the internal. So like that there's great differences, but the misconception is we have is that dunya, we go to the experts of dunya, but akhirah, we should go for the experts to the experts of deen. This is a great myth, it's a fallacy, it's an illusion, it's a mirage. We are living in a, a false world, a false impression. If we have to look for the best advisor, then the best advisor is Allah, who sent His best servant, Nabi alayhi to give us the best advice for both the worlds. So what's the proof of this? History, look at the lives of Saba, it will bear testimony to the fact that they never had deen, no they never had dunya. They followed the advices of Nabi wasalam. Allah procured for Sahaba dunya as well as akhirah such barakah in dunya which is beyond our comprehension and likewise the promises which Allah has made for Sahaba in Akhirah as well and Nabi had told us. So a person, a wise person will follow his every movement, his every step, his every breath of life in what Allah has advised us. So Baraka, among the asbab of Baraka is Khuruj fi sabilillah, al jihad fi sabilillah, striving in Allah's path number 34. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu hal adullukum ala tijaratin tunjikum min adabin alim. Should I not show you such a business, such a trade, it will save you from the fire of Jahannam. تؤمنون بالله ورسوله وتجاهدون في سبيل الله بأموالكم وأنفسكم ذلكم خير لكم This is best for you if only you knew Allah will forgive your sins So benefit upon benefit الخير ما قود في نواسها الخير إلى يوم القيامة Goodness is twined, intertwined, is, is tied up to the forelocks of the horses until the day of Qiyamah. 
in reward, in goodness, in in ghanima. Bu'ithu bayna yaday sa'bi sayfi that uh, I've been sent and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made my risk ju'ila riski tahta dhilli rumhi under the shade of my spear. So striving in a path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah has kept a lot of barakah in it. Nabi alayhi salam dispatched a contingent of Sahaba under the command of Azad Abu Ubaidah bin Jarrah radiallahu anh to intercept a caravan belonging to the Quraysh. So Rasulullah gave them a bag of dates as a provision. That's all, one bag of dates. And he would give Sahaba one date each daily for provision. One date, one kajur. Somebody inquired from Azad Jabir, how would you people manage on one kajur? He replied, we would suck on it like a child does and then drink water. That Allah put so much barakah, it was suffice throughout the day and night. And when the rations were finished, we must even that single date. Then we used to take our staffs and knock the leaves of trees, which they would then wet and then eat. And a stage came where they suffered excruciating hunger pains. And uh, that leaves they used to eat, it was called the army of leaves. So they came to a seashore and then they seen a gigantic dune, a, a mountain. And when they went closely, they observed it was a fish which was called Amber. So Abu Baida made Mashur Awad Sahaba and he said, We are the envoys of the Nabi of Allah and we are out in Allah's path. We have reached the point of des the desperation. It is halal. وَأَلْقَلْ بَحْرُ دَابَّةً يُقَالُوا لَهَا أَمْبَرْ فَأَكَلْنَا مِنْهُ نِسْفَ شَهْرٍ And we were 300 in number and we loved off that fish for a month. Until Saba said, حَتَّى ثَابَتْ إِلَيْنَا أَجْسَامُنَا we actually started picking up weight. We started picking up weight and uh, we used large containers to scoop up oil from the eye sockets and they would cut out pieces of meat from that fish as large as bulls. So as the Bubaida took 13 men, he put them in the eye socket, 13 he could fit in the eye socket. He took one of the rubs, put it uh, upwards erect and uh, a person who was on his camel, the largest person or the largest camel went through it. So they took chunks of meat, they made it for provisions. So when they came to Nabi alayhi salam and they mentioned the incident, he said, huwa rizqun Allah lakum. This is what Allah has taken out for you for your provisions. هَلْ مَعَكُمْ شَيْءٌ مِّنْ لَحْمِهِ تُطْعِمُونَ Is there any leftovers so that we could also eat from it? So Saba said, فَأَرْسَلْنَا إِلَىٰ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ فَأَكَلَ مِنْهُ Nabi والسلام, also consumed from that barakah, that fish. So striving in a path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah provides from unseen sources and finds solutions beyond comprehension. Hazrat Ma'awiyah radiallahu anha was the freed slave of Hujayr bin Abi Ihab and before accepting Islam, she says that when Hazrat Khubayb radiallahu anhu was in my home, I فَلَقَدْ اِعْتَلَأْتُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ سِيرِ الْبَابِ I, I gaze, I peep through a crack in the door. وَإِنَّ فِي يَدْهِ لَقِطْفًا مِنْ عِنَبٍ I, I found that he had a bunch of grapes مِثْلَ رَأْسِ الرَّجُلِ يَأْكُلُ مِنْهُ The size of a person's head. The size of a person's head. And he was eating it. And I was amazed and baffled. وَمَا أَعْلَمُ فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ عِنَبٍ يُؤْكَلُ 
and it was not even the season for grapes. I cannot, firstly he was a prisoner, but even if a free person was trying to get grapes, it was not possible because it wasn't the season of grapes. So, barakah and blessings, Allah has kept this door. Sahaba wa um, Hazrat Sa'ib bin Aqra radiyallahu anh says that I was the governor of Madain and I was sitting in the room at the throne of the Persian emperor was. And نَذَرَ إِلَىٰ تِمْثَالٍ يُشِيرُ بِأُسْبُعِهِ إِلَىٰ مَوْضِعٍ I seen a figurine pointing its finger in a particular direction. فَوَقَعَ فِي رُوعِ أَنَّهُ يُشِيرُ إِلَىٰ كَنْزٍ I thought so he must be pointing to something special in Asia. So I started digging in that place. فَاسْتَخْرَجْتُ كَنْزًا أَذِيمًا and I found a very, very great treasure. I wrote to Amr and he said this should be part of the ghanimat, the spoils of war and it should be distributed amongst the Muslims equivalently, equally. And uh, what did he find? Fiha safatum min jawharin. There was a bag or bags filled with gemstones. So a lot of gemstones, diamonds, valuable stones in this treasure. So Al Jihad Ulma I've written Khairun wa Barakatun ala hadi al umma ila yomil kiyama. That it's the means of khair, blessings, barakah until the day of Kiyama. And there is great reward wa riskul wasi and sustenance. So striving in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Jamaats are going three days, ten days, forty days, four months in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to try to maximize. A person also once went out in the path of Allah, he returned, a family member had passed away, he inherited 17,000 riyals. As he was driving, he came across a board where they were having an auction. So he went to the auction, they started bidding, they started at 10, 10, anybody ready to take it at 10? Why is this property? They went to 11, 12, 13, 14 and the, the bidding got more serious until it came to 17. And uh, he, he lifted his hands because he had 17, so going once, going twice, sold. Documents were prepared, signed and he went back home. Uh, and the Jamaat came and visited him, we needed taqaza, thus to go out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he left for Jamaat. As he was in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, somebody was trying to get hold of him. So they managed to get hold of him and said, so and so is looking for you. He said, you know what, I'm in Allah's path. I don't have time for this. Tell them to come see me. I won't leave the Jamaat. So somebody came to see him. He said, I'm a consultant for a big firm and has been assigned to purchase this piece of land. So the person said, no problem, you can have it. What's your offer? He said, 20. The person agreed. So the consultant was baffled and, and perplexed that uh, you agreed so easily. You are stunned that normally people negotiate. And my field of expertise is to go to people, secure deals. I've got the art, the skill of getting something valuable at nothing. Yeah, you just uh, agreed. So the person told him that uh, risk is written by Allah and uh, started in giving dawud, started giving him dawud about the greatness of Allah, the importance of deen, striving for deen. And when you strive for deen, Allah will put barakah. Ad-dunya maw'ud. Ad-dunya maw'ud, not maqsood. The dunya is promise, it is not our objective. Like a shadow, if you run after it, you'll never get it. But if you run away from the shadow, it'll chase you. So like that, he gave him dawat. So the person was affected. He said, you know what, my mandate was to go up to 25. Was to go up to 25. And uh, seeing your genuineness, I feel that I can give you that 25. He said, no, we agree on 20. He said, no, leave it to me. 
So anyway, the person left, uh, get, got him to sign all the paperwork and then he departed. And when he got, ho got home, he found uh, in registered post uh, a, a check that had come and he opened the check. The check was for 8 million rials. So what he didn't realize is when he went to the auction, he was budding for 17 million rials, not 17,000. So he, 8 million rials Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent without him making any effort. So striving in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will suffice for our needs, Allah will look after our family. A person wanted to go in Jamaat for 4 months, he didn't have any cash. So he told the Jamaat, let me see, he started doing amal, giving a little bit sadaqah, whatever he had, asking Allah to make a means. And one day he was uh, en route somewhere and somebody crashed into him. So he got out of the car, the person came out, apologized. He said, you know what, what's the value of this car? So he told him a price. So the person took out the checkbook and said, go cash the check and sort your life out. He said, but it's just a small smash, a crash, a dent, the car is still drivable. Where should I drop it? What should I do? He said, no, keep it, keep it. So he got the entire value of the car. He still kept his car and he went out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Baraka. A person was out in the path of Allah, it was time to return. So Amir Sab said, you know what, just join this Jamaat, the new brothers, spend a little bit more time. He said, oh, my, my plantation is ripe for harvesting. He said, turn to Amal, Allah will sort it out. So he continued, he went out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meanwhile, some crooks were passing that area, they seen it's deserted, they said, hey, you know what, here's a plantation ripe. So they decided that they will harvest it and steal it. So they harvested the entire crop, placed it in the storage place. And uh, the day they decided that we're going to load it and sell it, they came and when they entered the storage room, they found a snake there. So they got very scared and they said, this is a bad omen. This is a bad omen, there's no goodness in this here. So they left. On that very same day, this Mewati came home and found his entire field harvested and was ready in the storage place, ready for delivery. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks after his servants who look after the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma ansur man nasara deen. This dua is those people who help the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Malayal Yasmala used to say, making tilawat, making dhikr, dua, all these amala are meritorious, but it's not helping the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So every dua that was made in every era of help those who help the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who make sure and effort to revive the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Baraka, number 35, Baraka when we read certain duas, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam told Hazrat Jubair, that أَتُحِبُّ يَا جُبَيْرْ أَن تَكُونَ إِذَا خَرَجْتَ سَفَرًا When you are traveling, then do you prefer that you be in a better condition than your companions and more provisions than them? So he said, نَعَمْ بِأَبِي أَنْتَ وَأُمِّي يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ شُوَى So Nabi Alayhi Salaam told him that read these five suwar, Surah Kafirun, Surah إِذَا جَاءَ نَسْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ Surah Ikhlas and Falaq and Nas Start with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and end with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The Sabi said, I started doing that. I started doing that, and every time I travel, I read this dua. Wa kuntu ghaira kathir al mal. I never had any wealth, I was not rich, affluent. But as soon as I started reading this, a time came where I practice on this and I became the best of my companions in appearance, in provisions, in wealth, I returned with the best of it. So read the dua when traveling. Likewise to say, MashaAllah, إِذَا رَآ أَحَدُكُمْ مِن نَفْسِهِ أَوْ مَالِهِ أَوْ مِنْ أَخِيهِ مَا يُعْجِبُهُ You see in anything in your friends, family, relatives, فَلْيَدْعُوا لَهُ بِالْبَرَكَةِ Then make dua for baraka. فَإِنَّ الْعَيْنَ حَقٌ Because there is a truth to the evil eye. The example of the Sahabi Amir ibn Rabi'ah, he passed by Hazrat Sahal bin Hunayf and he became very ill and close to collapsing. He could not stand up. So just one gaze can cause serious 
consequences. Man ra'a shay'an fa'ajabahu. You see something and you are amazed. Faqala ma sha Allah. And you say ma sha Allah la quwwata illa billah. We can add it on. Lan tusibhu ayn. The evil eye will not fall on that person. So anything, even a mother can do, can affect her own child when she doesn't say ma sha Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the reality and tawfiq of making amal. The amal for today is قَدْ أَفْلَهَ مَنْ أَسْلَمَ A person who Allah is granted iman wa ruzika kafafan. He has sufficient provisions. وَكَنَّهُ اللَّهُ بِمَا آتَاهُ And be contented for what Allah has given you. So contentment from what Allah has provided for us, that is very important. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ